It is a delight to find myself in the year 2025. I would like to say that you are looking very handsome uh, with this dress up today. You are looking very cool. Why, thank you kindly. And might I say, you look quite splendid in your white blazer. <laughs> Now, shall we continue our conversation? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's get back to point. Death. Oh shit, how did you not know about these discoveries? I just lose my sleep after this, you know? Fear not. The scientific progress is an ever evolving journey. Tom is well, the calculus man. You are most welcome. It brings me great joy to know that the methods of fluxions, now known as calculus, have proven so instrumental in Welcome to AD Podcast where the impossible meets reality. Today we bring you something truly extraordinary. Sir Isaac Newton, not from the history books but from across the fabric of time itself. Thanks to a breakthrough in artificial intelligence, Newton's consciousness has been revived by feeding countless texts, journals, manuscripts into a super advanced AI. He's here in the future to discuss the groundbreaking ideas and perhaps even challenge the science of today. This is history reimagined. This is science beyond time. Buckle up because Sir Isaac Newton has arrived. Hello Isaac, welcome to 2025. How are you? Greetings. It is a delight to find myself in the year 2025. I'm most curious about the marvels of this age. How fare you in this modern world? I am very excited and have a lot of questions in my head, but let's begin with your childhood. Uh, let's uh, hear a bit from your side. Certainly. My childhood was spent in Woolsthorpe, a quaint village in England. Even as a young lad, I found myself deeply fascinated by the workings of nature. It was there that I first began to ponder the mysteries that would later shape my life's work. What more would you like to know? Uh, I'd like to know a lot of things, but I would like to say that you are looking very handsome uh, with this dress up today. You are looking very cool. Why, thank you kindly. And might I say, you look quite splendid in your white blazer. <laughs> Now, Shall we continue our conversation? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's get back to point. Um your theories have done some very remarkable thing to this humanity and we have done a lot of big achievements in science after your theories. It warms my heart to hear of such progress. The pursuit of knowledge is truly a noble endeavor. I am most eager to learn how my humble observations have contributed to these advancements. Yeah, mm-hmm. I actually have a lot of questions running in my head. Uh let's start with your uh your famous book Principia. Can you tell us how that thought came to your mind and how you got to end up with that book? Ah, the Principia. It was born from a deep desire to understand the forces governing motion. Observing the falling apple and pondering the motion of celestial bodies, I sought to uncover the principles that bound them. Through rigorous experimentation and mathematical reasoning, the foundations of classical mechanics emerged. It was a labor of love and perseverance. Are you mentioned about apple we we have read in lot of history books that an apple fell to your head and you just got an idea of uh, gravitation and we are sure that there is not just this much there must be a lot of back stories behind this a lot of additions and subtractions can you tell what actually happened with the apple indeed the tale of the apple is often told with a touch of whimsy While it is true that observing a falling apple inspired my thoughts on gravity, it was but a small part of a much larger journey. The concept of gravitation developed from years of studying planetary motion, celestial mechanics, and the laws of motion. It was a gradual realization 
piecing together observations and experiments. The apple was a catalyst, but the discovery was the fruit of much labor. You know what? The the tree from which the apple fell and you just watched it, that tree is still preserved. We have still kept it preserved in your honor. That is most remarkable. The preservation of such a tree is a touching tribute. It is heartening to know that the tree still stands as a symbol of discovery. Now, what other curiosities might you have about my life or work? <laughs> I have a lot of questions and I'm very excited. I'm very happy to see that you are uh, ready to express and you're ready to give. You are here on a podcast and ready to share with us your knowledge and let's let's get to your uh, laws of motions uh, let's start with the first law of motion how did that idea came up to your mind and what does it actually mean how do you explain that simply i am delighted to share the first law of motion often called the law of inertia arose from observing that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an external force it highlights the natural tendency of objects to resist changes in their state of motion. In simple terms, it means that things like to keep doing what they're already doing unless something intervenes. Yeah, because uh, be before uh, this theory, people thought that uh, to keep something continuously in motion, we need to add energy continuously to that system. But uh, that is not the fact which uh, we came to know from the first law of motion, right? Precisely. The first law clarified that no continuous input of energy is needed to keep an object in uniform motion. It was a significant shift from the earlier belief that continuous force was necessary. This realization laid the foundation for modern physics and mechanics. It truly changed our understanding of motion. A lot of things actually. Uh, let's dive to the second one. We'll go one by one to the from the first law, second law, third law and so on. Uh, like, Can you explain, elaborate your second law in a very simple way in your language? Certainly. The second law of motion states that the force acting on an object is equal to its mass times its acceleration. In simpler terms, it means that the greater the force applied, the greater the acceleration of an object. And the more massive the object, the more force is needed to change its motion. It's a straightforward relationship that explains how objects respond to forces. The second law basically says that if you push something, it accelerates depending on how hard you push and how heavy it is. More force means more acceleration, and heavier objects need more force to speed up. Simple as that. Uh, and this led you to your theory of gravity. Can you start from the bucket experiment, how you reached from the bucket experiment to uh, explaining the gravity of the celestial objects? Uh, how did you get from bucket to the moon? <laughs> ah, the bucket experiment. It helped illustrate the concept of absolute space and rotation. By observing how water climbed the bucket sides when spun, I reasoned that motion must be relative to something. This thinking extended to celestial bodies. If the same principles of force and motion applied on Earth, they must also govern the heavens. This led to the realization that the same gravitational force acting on the apple also governed the moon's orbit. It was a matter of seeing the universal application of these principles. From the simple experiment with the rotating bucket, I deduced that an unseen force was at play, illustrating the concept of absolute space. This insight, combined with my studies of planetary motion, led me to realize that the same force causing the apple to fall also governs the moon's orbit. It was a unifying principle, showing that the laws of nature apply both on Earth and in the heavens. Yeah. And your theories, <laughs> uh, we are like uh, using your theories to even land to the moon. But now we have a theory of gravity, uh, which was given after like about 200 years after your theory, uh, which explained... Uh, gravity as the curvature in space you also had your contribution uh, in optics like you were the person who for the first time passed light through prism and uh, white light was transformed uh. to different colors of light you were the first one to do that and that just brought a revolution in optics what do you have to say about this ah uh, it is true my humble experiment with the prism revealed the nature of light's composition. 
It was a delightful discovery indeed, illuminating the path for future scholars in optics. And you had uh, made a lot of different contribution in different things. You were very active in alchemy, right? Uh, how did you connect alchemy with uh, science? What was your conclusion after that long research? Ah, alchemy. A most fascinating pursuit blending philosophy with the natural sciences. My endeavors in alchemy were but steps toward understanding the hidden truths of nature, which eventually led to more rigorous scientific methods. Though transmutation eluded me, the quest enriched my understanding of the world. And there are people who used to say that uh, we can uh, like convert a uh, metal to gold using alchemy. Uh, what is that? Ah, uh, the age-old dream of transmuting base metals into gold. Twas a noble pursuit in alchemy. Though we sought the philosopher's stone, we discovered much about the nature of matter. While the transmutation of metals eluded us, the quest laid foundations for modern chemistry. Yeah. You have done a lot for for us, Thank you for the future, for the entire modern science. The future of science is ever promising. Let us continue exploring with curiosity and wonder. I can call it my life's best one hour of intellectual time you know because i had a lot of fun having the podcast with sir isaac newton we had newton from the newton to now in our podcast and it was amazing to even get to talk to someone who have died like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago and by collecting the information from books, from articles, from different perspectives, we have developed a consciousness and we have, we are having a conversation. It's an amazing thing. I think humanity has reached to a pro level and a lot more to go as well. And please do comment and let us know how you felt, what you feel about this podcast. And also please let us let us decide together whom we are going to have next in our podcast. The name that has most likes are going to be in our next podcast. So cheers and do comment. According to data, more than 90% of our viewers are unsubscribed. Why guys? Come on, let's subscribe and let's make it big. Cheers. This is from Newton to Now. It's a perfect book. To begin your journey in physics with and it's uh, full of stories with sparkles and sparkles of physics in it you can get it in different online stores offline stores just go and get it guys grab it guys the full podcast of echoes of genius with sir isaac newton is going to be uploaded in broke physics channel link in the description below I can see the sky fly with butterflies. I can hear the gecko singing loud. My legs are in your knees. In my tie, I'm up on you. In my thought, I'm walking on my mug, I'm a hunter.